Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette and our series, Is It Worth It? Today, we'll look at the Reverse Watch from Gégé Le Coutre, or Jäger Le Coutre as you know it, and see if it's worth your hard-earned money or not. <laughs> If you haven't seen our other Is It Worth It videos, you can check them out in our playlist here. As far as famous luxury watches go, the Swiss brand Gégé Le Coutre is not part of the Holy Trinity, but it is highly regarded by connoisseurs with over a thousand movements to its name. The now 90-year-old Reverso model definitely deserves to be called iconic. Why, you might wonder? It hasn't changed much since its inception in 1931. Also, the rectangular face and look, while not exclusive to JLC, definitely has become synonymous with the brand and the Reverso model. It has been worn by many famous people, including Charlie Chaplin, the Duke of Windsor, or Amelia Earhart. It has also made appearances in TV shows and movies, such as Don Draper in Mad Men or Christian Bale as Bruce Wayne. So in order to understand whether the watch is worth it or not, we have to take a closer look at the history of the brand, as well as the watch itself, the different models that are offered, how it holds its value, and ultimately determine whether it's worth it or not. By the way, if it's too much history for you, you can always scroll in the timeline below to the chapter that you're interested in. The brand can date back its roots to 1833, when the inventor and watchmaker Antoine Le Coutre opened a watchmaking shop in Le Sentier. Some of the brand's achievements include the millenometre, which was a device that could measure a micron. A micron is basically one millionth of a meter, and it allowed them to produce watches that were more precise. Historically, watchmaking was always done by different highly skilled craftsmen in different places, and watches were then assembled into one piece. But by as early as 1866, the company then known as Le Coutre et Compagnie had the revolutionary idea to bring all the workers together under one roof. Four years later, they introduced mechanized production techniques, which allowed them not having to sacrifice on precision. So how exactly does the name Gégé come into Gégé Le Coutre? Edmond Gégé was a watchmaker commissioned by the French Navy. He had invented incredibly thin movements, and by 1906, he was working together with Le Coutre et Compagnie to create one of the world's thinnest pocket watches. Because of this successful and continued relationship, the company was rebranded into Gégé Le Coutre in 1937. What exactly makes a Reversal watch special, or better yet, what exactly is a Reversal watch? The Reversal watch is a classic Art Deco model with a rectangular face that is flippable, and the name being inspired by the Latin word reverso, which means turnaround. You may wonder, what's the purpose of having a watch to turn around the face so you can't tell time when the whole purpose of a watch used to be to be able to tell time? The Reverso watch was originally created in 1931 by the engineer René Alfred Chauveau for Jacques-David Le Coutre, who was the grandson of Antoine Le Coutre, but it was originally requested by the watch dealer César de Trey. You keep it up over there? I know that's a lot of French names. Basically, the watch was commissioned by a French watch dealer who was asked by British officers stationed in India to come up with a watch that they could wear while playing polo. As you know, polo is a tough sport, and back then the crystals weren't as good as they are today, so they would often crack when they would wear their watches playing polo. So why didn't the officers just take off their watches when they played polo? I hear you screaming from the back ranks angrily. Well, one answer could be they might have lost them, and back then you couldn't just film the thief and say, I'm going to put your face on social media. Also in a game of polo, you have to exchange your horses multiple times because they wear out. So having a watch and knowing when to get your next horse is crucial. The first watches were branded reverso only. Later on, you could also find reverse of watches that were branded Le Coutre or just GG based on where they were sold and what the legal implications were. The final design they settled on was a rectangular flippable watch so the face could withstand a proper round of polo. Now, people had tried to protect watch faces before, but they put on grills, and you can learn more about that in our obscure men's jewelry video here. Fortunately, the Reverso 
wasn't just stylish with its art deco roots, but it was also very thin, which made it suitable for casual occasions as well as formal ones. On top of that, the flippable back could be engraved with your initials, with some symbols, or even bedazzled with enamel artwork. Sadly, by 1943, with the war in full swing and the economic decline, there was a shrinking interest in luxury watches as well as the Art Deco design. As a result, the Reveals and its design plans were locked in a vault, probably never to be seen by anyone again. Now, in 1972, the brilliant Italian watch dealer Giorgio Corbo visited JLC and while on the floor, he saw some stock and he noticed 200 old Reverso watch cases. Immediately, he recognized the iconic design and asked to buy all of them and had watch movements put inside of them. Upon his return to Italy, he quickly sold those 200 units, thus proving that there was a market for this vintage rectangular Art Deco design. Despite hesitation, Corvo eventually convinced JLC's top brass to revive the brand and to not just use the quartz movements that were popular at the time, but to go back to mechanical hand wound movements. Now, they weren't quick. It took 10 more years, and in 1982, Gégé Le Coutre launched the second iteration of the Reverso watch, but they didn't listen to Corvo and put in quartz movements. Sales were going strong. In 1985, JLC decided to develop a new Reverso model that was now water resistant because the old 30s model definitely wasn't. Of course, it had to have a rectangular shape and it had to be flippable. It also provided the ability to pivot at any point in time rather than having to push it to the end of the cradle to flip it. To commemorate the Reverso's 90th birthday in 2021, Gégé Le Coutre brought out a dedicated book which you can buy from Asuline for $195. And by the ever stylish Nick Folks, it's probably something that's well worth it for watch enthusiasts and Reverso fans alike. All right, now that we covered the Reverso's history, what kind of watches are available from JLC today? Frankly, there's a large selection of different Reverso models in different sizes, different finishes, with diamonds for women and without, in steel, in rose gold, in white gold, and even in platinum. You can also find different thicknesses, different movements, and different complications. Of course, it also comes in many different colorways with different watch bands and so forth. For example, on the smaller side, you have the Reverso Classic Small Model. The face of the case dimensions here are 35.78 millimeters by 21 millimeters. Those dimensions are 42.9 millimeters by 25.5 millimeters on the regular sized Classic Reverso today. Then there's also the one model, which is meant for women because it's a bit smaller, and you have the large Reverso. Here, the case measures 47 millimeters by 28.3. Fortunately, JLC offers many different models with different features, so you can decide if you want the small seconds with the small case, or the regular, or the large case. Basically, you can customize the watch and find exactly what you want and like. The classic model you can get today has a flippable top and the back doesn't show the watch. So it's basically the original version from 1931, but it is larger and different because now it's water resistant and back then it wasn't. You can see here I have an old watch, which is an original Reverso from the 30s and then a newer one. And they're quite different if you look at them closely. The thickness is different. The details are slightly different, but from afar, it still looks like a uniform design language. Now, there are tribute models to the Reverso, which just have the original Reverso branding, and they're more in line with what you have gotten in the 30s, but it's still not quite the same. The modern watches are a bit more refined, I'd say. That being said, there is a Reverso Classique, which has the same dimensions as the 30s model, but again, it is probably better today. In 2011, for the Reverso's 80th birthday, they brought out the Tribute to 1931 version, which is again inspired and very close to it, but not exactly what it used to be originally. Other popular features for the Reverso include the Duetto, and because most people don't play polo and they don't need to protect their watch face anymore because the crystals have gotten much better and they're just not rough with that kind of an expensive watch, you can have a Reverso with 
a different face on each side, which is pretty cool because you can have the same watch, you can travel, and maybe you want a black face and a white face or different colors and just switch it around. It's a pretty cool feature in my opinion. Again, they come in various sizes and colors, and you can even get it with a moon feature that shows you the moon faces. A feature they introduced in 1934, and it's still around today, is the small seconds just above the six, which shows you the 60 seconds on the watch. It's also something that I admire very so. While the Duetto shows the same time on the front face and the back face, there's the duo face, which in fact shows you two different times, and it's meant for different time zones. It also features a 24-hour subdial, which makes it a great watch for world travelers. In terms of movements, the original Reverso was hand-wound, and later on, the majority of Reverso watches are still hand-wound. That means you have to twist the crown to activate the movement. And while it may seem odd at first, it means you don't need batteries, and it's an oddly satisfying thing to set your watch and hand-wind it. Most reversal movements today have 18 or 19 joules, and one hand winding lasts between 38 and 42 hours. Now, JLC also offers an automatic movement for the reverso watch, and so you just have to move your hand without having to wind anything to keep the watch going. And yes, you can also still get quartz movements, or well, personally, if I buy a watch of this caliber, I want something mechanical ticking inside of it. Each model, depending on its size and price point, will feature a different movement, and fortunately, JLC features a picture of the movement and tells you more about it, which I think is pretty cool for a watchmaker because you kind of know what you get and you understand better why one thing is maybe more expensive than another. It's also very transparent, and as an informed consumer, I really appreciate that. Now, a very important aspect of an Is It Worth It video is the cost. So what do JLC reversals cost? Well, if you're on a budget, but you really love the watch, I think you can find used models around $2,000, $2,200, depending on the shape they're in. Now, if you want an original 1930s reverso, they're a little harder to come by because they're naturally limited. So if you find one that you like, you're probably better off buying it because chances of it popping up again are rather slim. For a watch in good condition, expect to spend around $4,000. You can also spend more. Maybe with a little luck, you can spend a little less, but that's around the right ballpark. If you want to buy a brand new Reverso, they start at $4,400 on the website and go all the way up to $67,000 for bedazzled versions with diamonds. Those are the Reverso Tribute to Beyond models, and you have to request the price for those. There are more regular watches, range between $4,400 and $13,000, depending on the size, the material, and the model. The least expensive entry model is the Reverso Classic Small. Personally, I like smaller watch faces because I'm not a big fan of the current trend towards larger and larger watches. That being said, considering it is a Swiss luxury brand, these prices are fairly reasonable and nothing out of the ordinary. So now the big question, is a GG Le Coutre Reverso watch worth your money or not? If you just look at it, from a pure investment angle, you have to say that watches in general are maybe not the best investment unless you love watches and you like to wear them while you hope that the value increases over time. Let's assume you like watches and you want something that holds its value or ideally increases in value. Well, in that case, I think Rolex is a better buy and I explain why in this video here. I also think Patek Philippe is probably a better investment watch. Some people may argue Audemars Piguet or Vacheron Constantin are also better. But besides Rolex and the holy trinity of watchmakers, JLC is right up there. Looking back at the retail price of a JLC Reverso watch, it has more or less kept pace with a stock market. On top of that, you can wear it and enjoy it. Now, as with most collectibles, the entry-level watches are rarely the ones that increase the most and have the highest ROI. Instead, the really rare, expensive, limited editions are what will drive the price in the long term. The good thing is, if you'll ever find yourself in a position where you have to sell your JLC Reverso, there is a market for it and you won't just get nothing for it. 
Now, even though the retail prices for the JLC Reversos have more or less kept pace with the stock market, you can't just assume that you can walk into a store, buy a watch at a retail price and hope that 10 or 20 years down the line, you can sell it for more than what you paid for. Unless, of course, you have an in-depth understanding of models and watch trades and you look at past experience, but what happened in the past is never a guarantee of what's gonna happen in the future. Also, unlike with Rolex, where buying certain steel versions are pretty much a guarantee for increased values and a good bang for the buck, with a JLC Reverso, it's a little more tricky. Overall, for a consumer good, a JLC Reverso holds its value fairly well. However, if I wasn't interested in watch as much and just wanted it to get an ROI and want to show people that I'm successful, I'd probably go with a Rolex Submariner in steel, for example. So what about the brand cachet and the watch design? Yes, JLC is not part of the big three watchmakers and it doesn't have the street recognition of a Rolex watch. However, watch connoisseurs and enthusiasts tend to agree that in terms of innovation and watch design and complexity, Rolex pales in comparison to JLC. Some people would even go as far to say that Jeje Le Coutre watches are horologically superior to Rolex. So when you buy a Reverso, you get a watch with a rich history that has a really cool design, has an interesting flippable face, and so overall, in my mind, it's a watch with much more character than most Rolex watches. And personally, I'd much prefer that. Now, where are JLC Reverso watches made? I can tell you not in China, India, or Pakistan, but in general, with a global supply chain, the question, where is something made, isn't as simple or straightforward as it used to be. However, in the case of Jeje Le Coutre, it certainly is. On the website, it says, J.J. Le Coutre is a fully integrated manufacturer with more than 180 crafts on the one roof. From research and development to design to assembly, decoration of crimp, every different stage required for the creation of a J.J. Le Coutre timepiece is conducted within the manufacturer in the Joux Valley in Switzerland. Now, does that mean all the raw materials come from Switzerland? Personally, I doubt that. But overall, from the design to the manufacturing of all the parts and the assembly, everything happens in Switzerland, which is exemplary. I hope that has put your fears of where a Reverso watch is made to bed. So what about the construction of the Reverso? If you don't go for a gold option, the entry-level version is stainless steel. The original intent of the Reverso was to be a protective watch and was supposed to be worn playing polo. If I played polo, I probably still wouldn't wear the Reverso watch today because I wouldn't need a watch doing so. After all, it's a watch and it can't survive everything. On their website, they even suggest that you don't vigorously shake your watch. Now, always keep that in mind with your mechanical timepieces. The modern Reversos are rated for three bar water resistance, which equals about 30 meters. Now, does that mean you can just take your watch and dive to 28 meters? and uh, play around heavily in the water? Well, technically you should be able to, but the pressure can sometimes change and there's pressure changes. So personally, I'd rather not expose my watches to water. Could I run for a swim or in a shower? Probably, but I like leather bands, so I won't do that anyways. They also still offer an engraving service, which can make the watch more valuable for you personally, but typically it lowers the resale value. Jeje Le Coutre's movements are all of great quality, so you don't have to be concerned. And on top of that, it's one of those brands where you can rely on them servicing your movement even three, four, or five decades down the road. Of course, I never know for certain, but it is highly unlikely that JLC will just vanish from the earth. Even if they did, your watch would probably increase in price. So overall, construction-wise, it is worth it. Of course, under the caveat that no, you can't just melt down your gold casing and hope to make your money back just from the gold value because luxury timepieces are high margin items. Last but not least, let's analyze the style of the Reverso. In a time where many men think that bigger watches are always better, the Reverso offers an option for people with smaller wrists who like smaller watches, but also accommodate men who want bigger watches. You can also get the Reverso in a thin version with a slim profile, which I personally like. 
Overall, the rectangular face is timeless, classic, simplistic, and it can be worn with leather bands or steel bands. Of course, you can also get nice gold bands if that's your style. Personally, I don't foresee the Reverso to ever go out of style. It is simplistic on the one hand, yet very characteristic and just very versatile. Also, in my mind, it's a more elegant look than many other luxury watches out there. So ultimately, considering all those factors, it probably doesn't come as a surprise to you that I'd say, I think for me personally, the JLC Reverso is worth it. But if you're just out there trying to find the watch that gives you the biggest bang for the buck and the best potential to increase in value, you're probably better off going with a Rolex watch. In today's video, I'm wearing a vintage charcoal flannel suit that is double pressed from Chester Berry. I'm combining it with a light pale green Winchester shirt with white contrast collars and cuffs. It is a club collar with a rounded tip. I like the green because it's unusual, yet the white collars and cuffs give it that proper business look. I'm combining it with a houndstooth burette silk tie from Fort Belvedere in green and off-white that adds a nice dimension of texture to the flannel and cotton fabric. My pocket square is white and made of cotton seersucker and works well with a white collar. The shirt has French cuffs and I wear silver cufflinks that are monkey fist knots. They're from Fort Belvedere and you can find it in our shop here. My watch is of course a Reverso watch and this one is just branded Le Coutre. It's an original 1930s watch and it's quite a bit smaller than the modern versions, but I like that look. And I like having the original real deal, even though it means it's not water resistant. It has a black face with white numbers and a black alligator strap. It works well with my black and silver buckled double monk straps, which are from Ace Marks. My socks are gray and white, two-tone solid socks that you can find in our shop here. Last but not least, I didn't have a silver ring with an onyx stone. I could have worn maybe something with a malachite stone, but I decided to go with this star sapphire with some diamond setting on the side and white gold. So the cufflinks, the shoe buckles, and my watch all have the same metal colors. <laughs>